We're going to focus on division of polynomials. Division of polynomials. But before we focus on division of polynomials, I want to take us back to fourth grade. And I want us to think about how do I do this problem? So right now, I want you to think about how do I do this problem? So take just 30 seconds and, and think about how you would do this problem. Okay, what would I do? What would I do to solve this problem right here? What would I ask myself? Good. How many times does 9 go into 56? Okay. Another way to say that um, is 9 times what gets me close to 56? <coughs> okay. How many times does 9 go into 56? Six. 6. Okay. Now look where I'm putting my 6. Okay. I'm putting my 6 over my 10's place because that's where that's going to fall. Then I say 6 times 9 is 54. Okay, what, what do I do right now? Subtract. Okay, I subtract. That is going to be a mistake alert when we move to polynomials. Okay, so remember, when we're doing long division, we subtract. 56 minus 54 is 2. My next step is I bring down my 3. How many times does 9 go into 23? 2 times. 2 times 9 is 18. Again, I subtract. I subtract. What's 23 minus 18? Okay. So, this, my answer to this is 62 remainder 5. 62 remainder 5. Now, that's probably what it would have looked like when you were in fourth grade. When you were in about sixth grade, you would have been taught to write 62, and then you would have written 5 over what you divided by. What did I divide by? 9. Okay? So this number is my remainder. This number right here is my remainder, and this number is what I divided by. This number is what I divided by, okay? Now, we are gonna take these principles and we are going to apply them to divisions of polynomials division of polynomials, okay? So, here we go. I have 5x squared plus 6x minus 8 divided by x plus 2, okay? So, inside my box, inside my division box, I'm going to put my polynomial. 5x squared plus 6x minus 8. Okay, outside my box, I'm going to put what I'm dividing by, which is x plus 2. x plus 2. Now, the question that I am going to ask myself, this is my question. So I look at my x, and then I look at my... 5x squared. That's what I'm looking at. So the question I am asking, what do I multiply x by to get 5x squared? What do I multiply x by to get 5x squared? Okay. So, what do I multiply x by to get 5x squared? 5x. Now, 
I am putting that 5x over my 6x. Remember here, I put my 6, I lined it up with my place value. I was going into 56, so I put my 6 on top of the 10's place. Here, where am I putting my 5x? What am I putting it over? The 6x. So I've got x to the first, and I've got x to the first. That's why I put my 5x over my 6x. So I keep it lined up by place value. Okay? Now, after I did that here and I figured out the 6, what did I multiply the 6 by? I said 6 times 9 equals 54. Okay, so I'm going to say 5x times 2 is 10x. 5x times x is 5x squared. Now, this is where students make mistakes. This is what I call a mistake alert. Mistake alert. Okay? We are subtracting. We are subtracting. So I have to put subtraction here and subtraction here. If either one of those were already negative, what would I do? I would add, okay? So you are subtracting. So you are gonna change the sign. You're gonna make it its opposite, okay? 5x squared minus 5x squared, what happens there? Good. 6x minus 10x. Got it. Okay. Now I bring down my minus 8. X times what gives me negative 4x? You got it. Okay. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. What operation am I doing, though? Okay? I, I am, but I'm going to be adding because I've got to change the sign. And I'm changing the sign because what I have to do is subtract. So when I subtract a negative, what does that turn into? Positive. Okay, so that's why this becomes positive and this becomes positive. Because I'm subtracting negatives. Okay, these cancel out and these cancel out. So what's my remainder here? Zero. So my answer to this problem right here is 5x minus 4. 5x minus 4. Okay? Okay. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of more types of problems. This problem right here without a remainder is what you need to be ready to do on your test. Okay? One of these without a remainder. That's what you're going to be exposed to on your test. Okay? I'm going to talk to you about synthetic division and some remainders with other types of problems because I want you to be exposed to it in case you're taking pre-calculus algebra next semester. In pre-calculus algebra, you do a lot with synthetic division. And so it's helpful to be exposed to it this semester. Okay, can I go to the next screen? Yes. Okay, so here, 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. We are doing the same thing. So I'm going to put 2x squared. Minus 3x plus 1 inside my box. Outside my box, I'm going to have x minus 5. So, the question that I ask myself, the question that I'm asking myself, what do I multiply x by? to get 2x squared. So I am looking at this x, and I'm looking at this 
2x squared. Okay, so what do I multiply x by to get 2x squared? 2x. And I put it over my x. Think of it as place value. I don't put it over the x squared because I don't have 2x squared. I just have 2x. So I put it over my x to the first. So 2x times negative 5 is negative 10x. 2x times x is 2x squared. And what am I doing here? What do I have to do? I'm subtracting, so I have to change the signs here. So I have a negative here, and this minus becomes a plus. I change the signs because I'm subtracting. 2x squared cancels. I'm left with positive 7x, and I bring down my 1. Okay? So the next question I ask myself, what do I multiply x by to get 7x. What do I multiply x by to get 7x? Seven. Good. Okay. 7 times negative 5 is negative 35. 7 times x is 7x. We are subtracting, so I have to change both of those signs. So I have 2x plus 7, remainder 36. Okay, so I have a remainder here. I have a remainder of 36. Now, when I had a remainder here, remember how I turned it into a fraction? The top number on the fraction was your remainder. The bottom was what you divided by. We are going to do exactly the same thing here. Exactly the same thing. So, my answer is 2x plus 7. What's my remainder? 36. Okay, and what am I dividing by? So, this is your final answer when you have a remainder. Okay. Now, I am going to erase this screen, so kind of let me know when you've gotten everything you need. Can I erase? Okay. So now I'm going to talk about something called synthetic division. This is a skill that you will need if you take any of the pre-calculus sequence. If you take pre-calculus algebra or you take pre-calculus algebra and trig. It is something that you use when something can't be factored. It's a way to find your factors when you run into a problem that cannot be factored, okay? That's what synthetic division is. So the first thing, and on your test, you can use synthetic division if you want to, but you don't have to, okay? You can use long division. It will be divide using the method of your choice. That's what it'll say, okay? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to focus on this x minus 5. X minus 5 is our factor. X minus 5 is our factor. So when I set X minus 5 equal to 0 and I solve, what do I get? X equals what? 5. Okay? X equals 5 is our solution. X equals 5 is our solution. We are going to focus on our solution in, law, in synthetic division. 
So our box looks different in synthetic division. I'm going to put my solution right here. So I have my five right there in the box. Now I'm going to look at each one of these coefficients. Okay, that is the number without the variable. So in 2x squared, what is my coefficient? 2. 2 is my coefficient. Okay? In negative 3x, what is my coefficient? Good. 1 does not have a variable with it. It's what we call a constant. So then we just write this down. Okay. My first step is I bring my 2 down. I just bring it straight down. Okay? So, step 1. Bring down. Okay? I brought it straight down. Step 2. I'm going to take that 5 and I'm going to multiply it by 2. So I'm going to say 5 times 2. What is 5 times 2? 10. And so I'm going to put it right here. Okay? Now, now I'm going to add these two things together. I am adding negative 3 and positive 10. What's negative 3 and positive 10? 7. Now, I'm going to take my 5, and I'm going to say 5 times 7. What's 5 times 7? Got it. Okay, and now I combine. What's 1 plus 35? Good. Okay. Now, This, you always kind of start on the right-hand side. This is always going to be my remainder. Always. It's always going to be my remainder. I'm going to erase what I multiplied by. This right here is always going to be my constant. Always. This right here is always going to be my x to the first. Those are the coefficients that go with these. So my answer here is 2x plus 7. What's my remainder? 36. And what was I dividing by? What's the factor I was dividing by? I'm putting all my X's back into it. So what was my factor? Okay, is that the same thing we got when we did long division? Yes. It is, okay? You can use synthetic division or you can use long division. It does not matter which method you use. In pre-calculus, you will get more comfortable with synthetic division. If you just like synthetic division, then you certainly can do synthetic division now. I just want you to be exposed to it so you can see the relationship between the two. Okay? I have one more that I want to show you, and then I want to focus on our quiz. I want to focus on the quiz. Okay? Can I move off this screen? Okay. Now, now I've got t to the third minus 8 divided by t minus 2. So, I'm going to use synthetic division on this. T minus 2 is my factor. Okay, if T minus 2 is my factor, what's my solution? Two. 2. So, that is what I'm going to put in my box. Now, I want to focus on my T to the third minus 8. I want to focus on my T to the third minus 8. In t to the third minus 8, I have 1 t to the third. Do I have a t to the second? No. So when I am dividing, 
I have to put zero t to the second. Okay, I have to account for that t to the second, even though it's not there. It's kind of like a placeholder. So if I had, um, Okay, if I had three going into 309, three goes into three one time, okay, I bring down a zero. How many times does three go into zero? So I have to put a placeholder there, right? So it's kind of the same thing. So I've got to have that zero t squared. Do I have a t to the first? No. So I also have to put a zero t to the first. Do I have a constant? Okay, good, it's negative eight. So I put that right there. So for my coefficients that I am putting down with this, I have a one, I have a zero, I have a zero, and I have a negative eight. Okay, I had to account for t squared and t to the first. Even though I had t to the third minus eight, I still had to account for all of those. Okay? Now, my first step, I bring the one straight down. My next step, two times one is two. I combine the zero and two. Two times two. Two times two is four. I combine the zero and four. Then I have two times four is eight and I combine the negative eight and the eight and I get zero. So, this zero is always my what? Remainder, Remainder. good. Okay, that zero is always my remainder. This right here is always my what? We call it constant. There's no x with it. That's my constant. What is this? x to the, what's this? x to the second. Okay, now something that I want you to realize here, okay, I've got one x squared plus two x plus four, okay? What did I start with right here? T to the, oh, they should be T's. Okay, T to the what? What did I start with? T to what? T to what value? T to the third, okay? So here, I've got T squared. Do you see how I've got t to the third in my original problem and then my answer's got t squared? That's one way you know what to start with. The other thing that you can use to start with is you can go from remainder. You always start on the right-hand side with remainder, constant, t to the first, t squared. Okay, if you had another number, it would be t to the what? Third, okay? So you're always gonna be one less than the polynomial, your, your, your bigger polynomial. So here, my bigger polynomial had x squared. Where did my answer start? With x to the what? First, okay? Okay, again, the reason that I do this is because I want you to be exposed to it in case you're taking pre-calculus algebra next semester. It's not really something you'll use in 147 or 154, but it's something you'll definitely use in pre-calc. What I expect you to do 
on Monday is something like this right here. You can use synthetic division if you want to, or you can just do this and you won't have a remainder on your test. Okay? Okay. I had a couple people come in late. So let me um, see if I've got, who didn't get your quiz? Okay, Kiera. Here. Okay. Christian? Wells? Chloe, Cortland, Cameron, Christian or Cameron? that division sign. I am going to change that division sign to multiplication and then I am going to reverse or flip 7y over 9x to the third. That's what I'm going to do. Okay? So I have 4xy squared over 7x times, and I only rever or do the reciprocal on the fraction immediately following the division sign. I only do it immediately following that. So then I'm going to have 9x to the third over 7y. Okay? I keep the last one exactly the same. Okay, because I'm not dividing the last one. What am I doing? Multiplying. Okay, now I'm going to start simplifying things out. I like to start with my numbers. You certainly don't have to start with your numbers, but I like to start with my numbers. Okay, I have a 4 right here, and I have a 12 right here. 4 goes into 4 one time. 4 goes into 12 how many times? 3. Okay? Uh, then I have a 14 over here, and I have a 7 on the bottom. How many times does 7 go into 14? Okay, how many times does 7 go into 7? Okay. Now, some of you missed this one, and it could have been because you wrote it in a different color. Do you see how I have a 3 here and I have a 9 there? Okay, three goes into both of those. Just because you broke 12 down already doesn't mean you can't break down the, do it again with the three. How many times does three go into three? Good, and how many times does three go into nine? Okay, three goes into nine three times, three goes into one, or three goes into three one time. Okay, now I've dealt with all my numbers. I've dealt with all my numbers. Now, some students choose to go ahead and rewrite the problem and then deal with the, the variables. I usually don't. I usually deal with the variables next. You don't want to combine things too much because then you're dealing with much bigger things and it's easier to deal with smaller numbers. So, one of the things that confuse students is this ability to cross out the x and the x. Students were looking to cross cancel. And cross canceling is fine, and we use cross canceling a lot. 
But the only thing that you have to make sure of is that it's on the top and the bottom. It can be on the top anywhere on the top, and it can be on the bottom anywhere on the bottom. Does it also have to have the same exponent? It does not, the, it does not have to have the same exponent in this situation because if you look right here, okay, so here I've got my x and my x. They cancel out. Do you see how I have a y here and a y here? That would end up being y squared. So I could cancel this y and this y and then this one. Okay? The other thing that I could do, do you see how I have a y right here? I could cancel these two y's. Then this y would make this one y to the what? So if I if I'm ignoring, let's do that. Let's do that. Okay? I'm going to cancel this y and this y. One's on top, one's on bottom. Now, I have y to the squared right here, and that means y times y, but I only have y on the bottom. So if I cancel this y, what does this exponent become? Just y. Just y, or y to the first. Okay? Now, I don't think I have any more variables that I can cancel. Sometimes, like in my, in my last class, I literally could not read my handwriting on the first problem that I wrote down. That happens in these types of problems. We are marking so many things out, we can't read our own handwriting. So be careful. So here, I've got a, a Y left right here. So pull that Y out. I have a 3 right here, and then I have a 2. What's 3 times 2? Okay. Here, I have x to the 3rd and x to the 3rd. What's x to the 3rd times x to the 3rd? x to the 6th. Okay. What do I have in the bottom? Just 7. Okay. Typically, you're going to see this rewritten. You usually see your variables in alphabetical order. 6x to the 6th, y over 7. Now, I didn't figure, I kept, I got a bunch of answers. I don't know if everybody was in the same group or what, but I got a bunch of this 6x6y. Um, and I was like, what is going on there? And I couldn't figure it out until about 6.30 this morning. You can't write your exponent like that. What you've written right there is a coefficient to y. This means 6x times 6y. Your coefficient, it's got to be, your, your coefficient and your exponent are very different. Okay? So if you were in the group that did this, that 6 needs to be smaller and it needs to be written as an exponent. Okay? So I'm not sure what happened there with that group, but be careful because 6, what, what this is right here, is 6x times 6y, 36xy. That's what that is, okay? You gotta make sure you're writing your, your six as your exponent. I can, I, I'm embarrassed to tell you how long it took me to figure out what was going on there. I think I had to see it three times before I was like, what? why are they getting this, okay? As I digress, sometimes I do that. Okay, how do we feel about this? You think you're gonna see this on the test? Very, very likely. Okay. Um, now, this is number six. This is number six. I had lots of people have trouble switching from multiplication, division, and canceling everything out to addition and subtraction where they were really making each individual thing bigger. They were adding more stuff to it. You have to completely shift your thinking and always go back to those simpler problems. What do I do when I've got one half plus two thirds? Okay, so we're gonna start right here x squared times y, okay? I'm going to write that down as my LCD. 
I don't know that I've got everything covered, but I gotta start with one of them. So I've got x squared times y. It might be beneficial to you to think of that as x times x times y. Now, I have an x right here. Do I have that covered already? I do. I have y squared right here. Do I have that covered? No. So I've got to have times y. Okay? So my LCD is x squared, y squared. That's my LCD. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what I'm missing in each denominator. Okay? So my first denominator, I have x squared times y. What am I missing from my LCD? A y. So I'm going to multiply this times y. If I multiply the bottom times y, what do I do to the top? Excellent. Okay? What am I missing on my second denominator? X. Excellent. So if I multiply my bottom times x, what do I multiply to my top by? X. Excellent. Okay. You're pretty much done at this point. You just got to clean it up a little bit because there's not anything we can cancel. What happens is students want to start cross-canceling here. You can't cross-cancel in addition and subtraction. If you missed these, it's because you tried to use addition and subtraction principles. I'm sorry. It's because you didn't use addition and subtraction principles. You use multiplication and division principles. You are adding and subtracting here, so you've got to use the different rules. So be careful. Do not use multiplication and division principles. Use addition and subtraction ones. Okay? Now, 2 times y is 2y, 8 times x is 8x, and then I leave my common denominator alone. I leave it like this. You're done. Okay? Okay. Can I move to the next screen and do the next one? Okay. Okay. Um, this, is, um, this is number eight, and I, I want to do number eight so that we can make sure we get number eight done, because I had a lot more people miss number eight than I did have missed number seven, okay? So let's look at this. 10AB over A squared minus B squared minus B over A minus B. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to factor the denominator that can be factored. So I've got 10AB over A plus B, A minus B. That's the difference of perfect squares. When we start dealing with binomials, you've got to treat them like binomials. That's different than what I had here. I had monomials. I didn't have two terms in the bottom. Okay, then I've got minus B over A minus B. So I'm going to start here with my LCD. A plus B, A minus B. Then I look here and say, okay, is my A minus B already accounted for? Is it? It is already accounted for. So we're good, okay? Now, I go back here to my first fraction. Is there anything missing in my denominator from my LCD? What's missing in my first fraction, in my first one? Nothing, okay? So that's similar to having one-sixth minus one-third, and my LCD is six, okay? With one-sixth, do I have to do anything to it? No, because I already have it in terms of my LCD. Now, the negative one-third would have to be multiplied by two over two, 
okay? But my first one is fine. My second one, what is it missing? A plus B. So I'm gonna multiply my denominator times A plus B. If I multiply my denominator times A plus B, what do I have to do to my numerator? A plus B. A plus B. Now, here's the other place that student made mistakes. Actually, I'm gonna keep it red because this is something that you wanna see. This is minus this entire rational expression. I want to take this minus and make it a plus, then I'm going to put that negative in front of the B. Students forgot to distribute the negative. That's what happened. So this is negative 1 in front of this B. So I've got to do negative 1B times A and negative 1B times B. So my first fraction or rational expression stays 10AB over A plus B, A minus B. But my negative B's got to be distributed. So I have negative 1AB. That's negative 1 times positive 1, because you've got a 1 in front of this A. Then you have B times A. That's how I got that. Negative 1B times B is negative B squared. I got a lot of plus B squareds right there. Okay? Now, AB, so 10AB and minus 1AB are like terms. So those can be combined. So I get 9AB minus B squared. And that is your final answer right there. Okay? Those are probably the three that students miss the most. Okay? And the back side, people, I got minus zero, minus zero, minus zero, minus zero on the front. And then sometimes I got minus 30 on the back. So focus on the back. And remember, I did classwork that looks a lot like this. So go back and watch those classwork videos, and don't forget the practice test will have videos. You will get an email from me in a couple of hours, okay? Um, I was at a funeral yesterday. I thought I was going to be heading to Atlanta to another funeral, um, but I'm not for several weeks. Um, and so I'm a little bit behind, but as soon as I get everything together, I'll get your videos done and your practice tests done, okay? Quiz, practice tests, that's what you need to focus on. Homework is due on Monday. I'll see you guys on Friday.
Yes, ma'am. I'll be right on back. Where is my name? Okay. So any uh, interesting news on the filming front? Any more information on the filming? I uh, know as far as I know, I think they were not filming here. So you think they're still here or do you think they went back to Birmingham? Or? I absolutely have no idea. All I know is that they're still in Alabama. Yeah, so I looked up the movie mm -hmm. or the Netflix thing and it said that the whole movie was going to be filmed in Birmingham, Alabama. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So my son was upset because I didn't tell him. I told my daughter that my son's not a huge Marvel fan. So he's like, that's the dude from Twilight, Mom. I'm like, didn't know you were a Twilight fan, but okay. <laughs> so. I actually did see Bill Skarsgård on the, um, on the, like everybody saw him and he just didn't get close enough so he could get pictures of him. That's cool though. What a fun thing. Most exciting thing that happened in Maybe. Ever. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs>